Our next objective is to compile the SM curve. Now, for us to compile the SM curve, we need the characteristic strength of the specific weld detail. Um, and in this case, we're going to use the modified value. So what we're going to say is um, the modified um, strength detail is of the EI and recall that delta sigma C and we just say comma mod and that's basically equal to delta sigma C divided by gamma MF times a, a factor for 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 for, for um, K is for size times K D for temperature and what was the other one? And then if we have any other benefit factors, we will add it here. What's important is um, this is the fatigue strength at equal to two uh, million cycles. Right. So that is that is what we have at the moment now. I'm going to, let's go back to our notes and we look at the SN curve that we have there. Right, there's the SN curve for variable amplitude loading. As we can remember, we have this characteristic strength at 2 million cycles, which is now the delta sigma C modified value that we're going to use. Then, <clears throat> because actually that is the detail category that we will have to modify to get to our delta sigma c. And now we want to calculate the, um, the constant amplitude fatigue limit, which is this value here, and that's the value at 5 million cycles. And now we know the slope of the SM curve from there to there is equal to 3. So what we can say now... The modified, uh, 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 sorry, the constant amplitude fatigue limit is then out to the I and delta sigma D, that's the symbol word used for it, is equal to delta sigma C. And of course, now in this case, it's the modified value times NC, which we know is 2 million cycles, divided by MD, which we know is 5 million cycles, to the power 1 over M1, which we know, of course, is 3. M1 is equal to 3. So then we have an equation for um, to find... The, the, the constant amplitude fatigue limit um, for that first part of the SN curve. Um, we have, we go back to the SN curve, then we see after this knee point, if we have a stress range exceeding the constant amplitude fatigue limit, we will, the stresses below the constant amplitude fatigue limit will cause damage on an SN curve with slope equal to 5. Here, M is equal to 5, and that one goes to 100 million cycles, and this point here is called the cutoff limit. So, the, SN, the other point that we have on the SN curve is, is the cutoff limit, and that is, of course, equal to delta sigma, sorry, The cutoff limit is now delta sigma L equal to, and the other point that we have now is delta sigma D. And we multiply that by, of course, ND divided by NL. And we know NL in this case is 100 million cycles. And this, the slope of the SM curve in this regime, 
is M2 equal to 5, of course. Right, so now we have the important points on the SN curve that we need to, 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 to perform calculations. And all that we need to do now is compile an equation or write down an equation that gives the endurance for any stress range from this point here, which will be considered 1.5 times sigma y, to the cutoff limit and then, oh, sorry, to the constant amplitude fatigue limit and then from the constant amplitude fatigue limit to the cutoff limit and then, of course, beyond. So we will have three regimes. So we can write down the equation. We can write down the equation for the endurance now for these three regimes as follows. So we say the endurance for any stress range. Um, and let's give them names. Say the endurance NR of the NI N capital R. Remember how I put that in. For any stress range, let's say um, of the EI, that's slash delta slash sigma R. Um, is then, and as explained, of the EI, we're going to put in the equation. But the equation that we're going to put in, um, I need a little bit of things here, so we need the matrix format. So we have three regimes. So we can say that in this equation, let's go out here, in R is equal to, to um, and here on the left hand side, let's give it a bracket, just a single bracket like this, right? And then we have the first part of the SN curve where we are at the um, M1 equal to 3. So in this case, we will have. Um, we can use different values. We can use delta, sigma, c. And remember now, this is the modified one, right? Divided by delta, sigma, r to the power, right? To the power m, m1. Where m1, our control z, sorry, I, I forgot this thing is doing that when I don't put that into bracket. Um, M1, and then of course times NC, because we use delta sigma C as our reference, and this is for 1.5 sigma Y, uh, larger or equal to delta sigma. That, this is just the range of which is applicable, and as we know, it's applicable right down to um, the constant amplitude fatigue limit sigma t, and of course M1, as we know, in this regime is equal to 3. The next one is where we go on the slope of 5. So in this case, we use the constant amplitude fatigue limit as the, the, the reference value. So we say delta sigma d, that's the constant amplitude fatigue limit, divided by delta sigma R, the applied stress range, right? And in this case, we are on a slope of 5, let's call it M2, and we know, and because we use delta sigma D here, we need to use ND here for the number of cycles, and this is applicable for a, a, a delta sigma, that for stresses below the constant amplitude fatigue limit, right? And above above the cutoff limit. Um, the cutoff limit, and the cutoff limit, as we know, is delta sigma L. Good. And then the last one that we have is where we are below the cutoff limit. Oh, and just another note here. And in this case, M2 is equal to 5. Good. The other cases where we have are at stress ranges below the cutoff limit. Now, except when we have a corrosive environment with no surface protection, we know the cutoff limit will disappear and, we, and the curve will continue. But in this case, they say we have surface protection, so we can assume that there is a cutoff limit. And of course, for stress ranges below the cutoff limit, we will have um, infinite uh, life 
um, for a delta sigma r smaller than delta sigma l. Right, and that is the SM curve. And as shown, we have the modified characteristic strength. We have the cutoff limit, and uh, sorry, the constant amplitude fatigue limit and the cutoff limit. And then we can create an equation where we can calculate the endurance for any stress range delta sigma r. Just a point to remember if there are no stresses exceeding the constant amplitude fatigue limit, then we will have infinite life for stresses between cutoff limit and constant amplitude fatigue limit. Remember that. If there are, well, we assume only one cycle where the stress range can exceed the constant amplitude fatigue limit, then stress ranges between the cutoff limit and the constant amplitude fatigue limit can cause damage and must be considered. But I will show you now when we set up the table to calculate damage in this case.